giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Best of the West, week four of Destination Deep Space, presented by the Boeing Company, brought some of the most interesting and exciting finals we've seen this season. Backup bots, broken bots, and overtime all made appearances this week. We'll break all the action down and take a look at this week's top 10 and look forward to next week's excitement. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Clanot. And I'm Bryce Croucher. All right, before we kick things off this week, we've got a great fun giveaway that Tyler's going to talk about here. Yep, so just uh, piggybacking on all the other shows, uh, continuing with the uh, fun mug from our friends at Redfish Robotics. You can check out all the mugs at tiny.url forward slash Redfish Robotics. Uh, and the keyword that our Best of the West crew has picked out is BOTW for uh, Bodily Odor Today Weekly. Uh, no, for Best of the West. It's not that that's improv right there, guys. Just see, you know, just pointing that out. You're great at yep, it. But... Awesome. So, yeah, BOTW uh, is the keyword. So type that in. Make sure you do follow the channel in order to be eligible to win. Or you can subscribe, uh, help support the channel. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime or for a few bucks a month. And you also get five times luck. So good luck, everybody. Enjoy the show. Awesome. So thank you to uh, Redfish Robotics for doing that. We've got a lot of action to cover this week. So let's hop right into it. All right, this week at the West Valley District event, uh, we saw 29 teams duke it out for the right to pick off their playoff destinies. Uh, ending up in the top spot was event favorite 2046 Bare Metal, who finished quals with an average ranking score of 2.83. Despite a qual record of 10 2 0, this was courtesy of their four rocket ranking points. In Alliance selection, 2046 picked their the 14th ranked team. 2147 Chuck and selected 4104 Blackhawks in the second half of the draft. The playoffs played out smoothly as only one quarterfinal went to a third match, and the only upset leading to the finals was in semifinals two, as the third seed of the Alliance of 4980 the Canine Crusaders, 3218 Panther Robotics, and 3693 Gearhead Pirates bested the number two Alliance in two straight matches to earn their ticket to the finals. In the first finals match, the Red Alliance took the win with a score of 75 to 61. The second final match was closer due to an apparent breakdown of 4104, but also fell to the first seed of the Alliance with a score of 85 to 75. So congratulations to 2046 Bare Metal, 2147 Chuck, uh, 4104 Blackhawks, and big congratulations to 2557 The Soda Bots for their Engineering Inspiration Award. An additional congrats to 2046 Bare Metal for winning the Chairman's Award and their double gold Kling Bling. Huge performance for them this weekend. And elsewhere in the PNW, the Glacier Peak District event was host to a wealth of top teams and nail-biting action. The qualification rounds were a tight race with 45-12 Otter Chaos holding the top spot for a solid portion of the event. But it was once again event favorites, this time 2910 Jack and the Bot, who ended the qual rounds with the number one seat. Their first pick went to Week 1 Partners 21, 2930, the Sonic Squirrels, and they picked up 1294 Top Gun at the end of the draft. Their trip to the finals was relatively uneventful in the way of wins and losses, but they did have two incredibly close matches in the semis to beat out the number 4 alliance captained by 1983 Skunk Work Robotics. The other side of the bracket, however, was much less mundane, with the number 6 alliance of... 2412 the Robototes, 2928 Viking Robotics, and 5588 Rain Robotics ending up in the finals after a series of amazing matches. The finals were kicked off with a bang when 1294 died in their opponent's hab zone, causing a Blue Alliance win of 73 to 72. 
The second final match was much less close with the Blue Alliance operating while down a robot and the final score of 80 to 37 in Red's favor. Finally, in match three, all robots seemed to be functional and the district victory fell to the Red Alliance with a score of 83 to 59. Congratulations to 2910 Jack and the Bot, 2930 Sonic Squirrels, and 1294 Top Gun. Big congratulations to 4915 Spartronics for winning the Engineering Inspiration Award and 1983 Skunk Works for winning Chairmans. All right. Thanks, Bryce. Uh, the rankings at the Colorado Regional this weekend were hotly contested all throughout the qualification rounds with a multitude of teams able to earn those extra RPs. However, it was the consistent climbing and ability to solo a rocket under modest defense that allowed 16-19 to secure the top spot in Colorado for the fifth consecutive year, posting an adequate 3.7 ranking score. For the first time in that five-year span, their first pick was a fellow Colorado team, 1410, the Kraken. They also picked up 4068 Barabotics out of Colorado and were able to work through their quarterfinals and semifinals in four decisive matches. On the opposite side of the bracket, second seed 1726, the Nerds picked 4593 Rapid Acceleration out of South Dakota and 4550-somethings Bruin out of Colorado. They were able to work through their quarters and semis in four matches as well, but the finals would be a different story. They were a classic rough and tumble defensive free for all with 4068 playing defense for the number one alliance and 4550 playing great D against 1619. Left undefended, however, 1410 was able to lead the Red Alliance to take the first match 88 to 69. The second match was close throughout Teleop at 1726 and 4593. Uh, placed cargo and uh, hatch panels under pretty solid defense from 4068. And the blue alliance, or sorry, the red alliance was able to keep it close, but a failed climb by 1619 and two penalties allowed the blue alliance to take it 78 to 72. Finals three started similar, similarly to the first two as the match timer ticked under a minute left. However, 4593 got high centered on a piece of cargo in the depot and pulled both 1726 and 4550 over to help them get off. This left the Red Alliance free to dump cargo and climb uncontested to finish out the event with an 85 to 63 win. In the 15 year history of the Colorado Regional, this was the first win by an all Colorado Alliance, much to the pleasure of the hometown fans. And because of pre-qualifications by 1410 and 1619, all six of the finalists, finalists qualified for champs thanks to wild cards. Congratulations go out to 7891 Innovate on the Regional uh, Rookie All-Star Award, 6652 T. Gray Robotics for the Regional Engineering Inspiration Award, and 2341 The Sprockets for the RCA. Out west at the LA Regional, it wasn't the most hyped up regional this weekend, but the lack of attention didn't do anything to dissuade the competitors from California, Hawaii, and Chile. At the end of Qualls, it was 5199, the Robot Dolphins from Outer Space, who have a fitting name for this year's game, were able to take the top spot. They chose the only other undefeated team of the weekend, 330, the Beach Bots, and rounded out the alliance with 2710 Jetstream. The second alliance on the other side was captained by 4415 Epic Robots, joined by 3309 the Firebots, 2375 Dragon Robotics, and both the one and two alliances worked their way through quarters and semis without much of a hiccup. When it came to the finals, however, they threw the script out the window. The first match started off rough for both alliances when 330 didn't move after Sandstorm and 3309 on the other side tipped forward as they came off the second level of the HAB. It got worse after the Red Alliance captain 5199 was disabled after their bumper became dislodged with about a minute left in the match. Blue Alliance was able to take the first finals match 52 to 35. The second match was much closer to what we expected to see out of these two alliances with all six robots at full strength. In a great back and forth match, the score ended tied at 74. So on to the third match, Blues still up by one. In the sandstorm period, 3309 once again tipped forward, apparently after deploying something under the robot. Might have been their climber, not sure. Leaving Blue down one scoring robot for the entirety of the match. Solid defense by the Blue Alliance partner, 2375, kept it closer than expected, but Red took the match 66 to 47. Now we're on to the fourth finals match, or apparently overtime, as it's called. 
Red Alliance came out strong, ready to complete the comeback. With about four, with about 80 seconds left, 44-15 for Blue gets high centered on a ball, and 33-09 has to go and push him off, costing them some valuable cycle time. A while later, 33-09 dies with part of their bumper hanging over the red cargo ship line, accumulating at least two fouls. All the while, 51-99, the robot dolphins from outer space and the beach bots are cycling away. As this roller coaster of emotions finally came to the end. It was the Red Alliance who walked away winning the final match, 89-41. to Congratulations to them, and congratulations also to 1515 More Torque on winning the Regional Chairman's Award, 5512 Pizza Mechanica for winning EI, and 7871 Southgate High School Robotics for winning the Rookie All-Star Award. So Tyler has a comment. Tyler, what's well, up? Two things I want to say. One, thanks uh, the OMG Robots 2 for the 500 bits there. Appreciate that, buddy, and all your support. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up is uh, just as I was watching this match in here, uh, it's hard to find time codes on this, but uh, I want to give props to the most uh, over-enthusiastic flag-waving ref I've ever seen, I think. <laughs> oh, uh, up at the top of the screen? Yeah. It, yeah, it's very I saw hard that to, earlier. You'll see, you'll see this in about like 85 seconds. Like, watch this dude. Like, he's like going to kill somebody oh, if that, uh, that comes. No. So watch the flag-waving here, though. <laughs> It's coming up in a second. This is pretty intense. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like he's going for it. Like yeah, that's pretty get good. those three points, man. Uh, that's classic. Yeah, that, that whole event, man. The the finals. When I was re watching that, it was uh, it really almost brought me to tears. Uh, all right, Bryce. What went down in Sacramento? All right. The Sacramento Regional brought in some of California's big guns this weekend. Coming into the event, the biggest question seemed to be how high would the ranking scores go? The answer was provided by 1323, who posted a ridiculous 3.88 ranking score with one cargo short of a perfect qualification round. Their first pick, they chose the CVR winning partner 1678 and 3815 Wolfpack Robotics. The number one alliance looked to be in championship form right out of the gate, posting scores of 111 and 120 in the quarterfinals. They continued to dominate in the semis with two scores of 115, the second of which included two completed rockets. They would go on to meet the second alliance in the finals. The captains 973, the Greybots, reached way down in the rankings to find 1072 Harker Robotics and 3250 Kennedy Robotics. These two incredible alliances delivered championship caliber final matches and great defense from 3250 was able to drastically limit the scoring potential of Citrus while 973 and 1072 scored fast enough to keep things close. However, with the defense focused on 1678, Madtown was free to score the opposite half of the field and the Red Alliance was able to stay on top winning back-to-back -back matches with scores of 96 to 82 and 86 to 67. Congrats to 7663 for winning the regional All-Star Award, or Rookie All-Star Award, sorry, 3598 on Engineering Inspiration, and 701 the Robovikes for winning their first ever Chairman's Award. Yeah, that alliance was ridiculous. Definitely kind of a championship preview alliance if I've ever seen one. For sure, and... Uh, one little note, they did tie my prediction for the season-long high score. I don't know if that'll stand, but that's where 120, it's 120, man. I, it, that's close. That's close. They're getting there. All right. Just down south of that in sunny Seaside, California, the inaugural Monterey Bay Regional started off smoothly enough. 36 teams were battling it out to take home the Blue Banners, and after 72 qual matches, 31-28, the Aluminum Narwhals with a ranking score of 3.0 took the top seed. They went on to pick 2073 Eagle Force and 6506 Steel Boot. Um, for some reason, I love that name. It's so simple. Uh, to round out their alliance. For now, quarters went by in standard fashion, with the exception of five upsetting four. In semis, though, the third alliance upset the second alliance in back-to-back -back matches to move into the finals. That alliance of Captain 1671, the Buchanan Bird Brains, 6814 Ellipse, and 702 Bagel Bites. For now, the first finals match was a bit odd. Following a drivetrain failure in semifinal two, 2073 worked on repairs during finals one, so the number one alliance chose to go at it 2v3. Unfortunately for them, 3128 sat idle for about a minute after Sandstorm after apparently a can wire was temporarily disconnected. 
The third alliance took the first match by a stunningly close margin for a 2v3 with the top score on the other side down at 55 to 42. Following finals one, both alliances tried to call a timeout, adding two minutes of the field timeout as only one timeout can be called. As time ran, uh, as the timeout was going, the time was running out for the top seed to figure out if 2073 would be good to go. They went ahead and called for the backup robot. At the exact same time, the third alliance called for a backup robot. Immediately following calling for the substitution, the alliance captain for the number one alliance found out that 2073 was actually fixed. So rather than sub out their first pick, 3128 opted to sub out the still operable 6506. Unfortunately for both our finalist alliance, many, if not all, of the eligible backup teams had either packed up, left, or declined to be a backup. This resulted in a fair bit of confusion as the event tried to figure out which teams to pull in and how to get it sorted out in the FMS. Eventually, after a call to HQ, the teams took the field with 60-59 and 26-43 subbed in for alliances 1 and 3, respectively. The second match was all red as 2073 was back to full strength, and they evened the set, winning 81-55. The final match was tight at the beginning, but the number one alliance's sub, 60-59, died just 25 seconds into the match, leaving the third alliance to score basically uncontested. 2073 also appeared to struggle driving again, and 3128 fell during their attempted level three climb. In the end, it was the number three alliance that took the match and the tournament, 71 to 49. Congratulations to all eight, team and eight teams in the finals who qualified for champs uh, due to wild cards, substitutions, all that stuff especially 1671, who won Chairman's to get that gold, gold, cling bling, and 2073, who won EI to finish the silver, silver, cling bling. Also, congratulations to 7528, who took home the Rookie All-Star Award. All right, Tyler's got another well, I, little tidbit Well, I just want to give a, a shout-out here to OMG Robots 2 and uh, Dirt Bikers, who are apparently having a bits, a bits war by uh, donating uh, multiple different amounts of their favorite teams, including 1,323 bits. Uh, from mm -hmm. OMG Robots too. So, hey guys, you know what? Battle it out all day if you want, but we appreciate it either way. Thank you for that uh, support of first updates. Now, uh, hey guys, one other thing I want to mention: <clears throat> the Monterey Bay Regional was pretty nuts. I was watching a lot of it on Sunday. You had a fire alarm uh, right after uh, uh, line selections, at least. So they're about to go to lunch, and the fire alarm goes off, and they have to like talk, say stuff in the microphone, like, "Oh yeah, by the way, uh, everybody actually does need to leave because there's a fire alarm going on." To uh, Clint, the backup stuff you're talking about was, was absolutely insane. Uh, you know, Blair just going on microphone and saying, well, uh, calling the teams out for not showing up because they said they're going to be, and then they decided to go home. Uh, so Blair just, just savagely calling them out. I, I love it. But <laughs> it's, uh, it was good stuff, but an interesting thing to point out. And I hope honestly, the teams that packed up and left, I hope this is a lesson learned by them that they just gave up a 50% chance to go to championships by doing that. So teams, you know, there's a great thread going on Chief Delphi right now. Well, great's a relative term, but there's a thread on Chief Delphi going on right now about the uh, the backup box um, sort of idea that, that I think Will Payne uh, put out there. Uh, yeah, I think something, you know, this might be something we see changes for in the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Bryce, you know, after hearing about that back, backup bot fiasco in Monterey, uh, that wasn't the only one at Colorado in the semifinals. Uh, 2261 was called in a backup bot, and they were still there. But because, you know, you don't really expect to play, you're not with an alliance. Um, so you're kind of just sitting there. And by the time you get called in, you have like two minutes to get on the field. No time to plan. Uh, is it time that we move that four robot alliance thing from championship to the regionals and districts? Yeah, I mean... I definitely think that the situation is problematic for everyone involved, um, least of all the backup teams. Uh, teams that end up needing a backup oftentimes miss their window for submitting a backup coupon. Uh, once they do, the whole event has to wait often a pretty long time in order to get these robots ready. Uh, I definitely think that wherever possible, uh, four robot alliances are the way to go. But uh, districts, I think that may not be the case, um, seeing as a lot of districts, including one of the ones covered this week, we don't have enough teams in order to fill uh, four robot alliances. So it would potentially be problematic in that regard um as well as there's some loss in 
the honor of making the playoffs when maybe only one or two teams doesn't make the playoffs. So uh, it may not be practical everywhere, but I definitely think it's the better model to follow in um, most cases. What if there was thresholds put into place? So if you if you had you know more than forty two teams or something like that, that would then allow to have four robots per alliance. Or some some sort of threshold point, so that would take care of all districts, right? Because no districts are over forty, right? Um, so that would say, okay, anything over that that is essentially regional that's big enough for it. Now you get four, and I mean, to me, that almost takes care of the some of the wild card championship situation stuffs, so, right? Like maybe you have one less wild card that way, so you got to look at that as well. Now, you know, is that fourth robot should they be more qualified to go to championships than? the uh the finalist captain or something like that and that's a tough decision you might have to might have to make for something like that yeah yeah you know you could work it into the the way like maybe the fourth team doesn't auto qualify but maybe the wild card goes you know finalist captain then fourth robot unless they you know happen to play i think there's a lot of ways that you know you could do it like you could make it a sub as opposed to a you know like a champs you can play whoever you want whichever match right um so I don't know. It's something to think about. Um, I definitely this weekend kind of opened my eyes to the fact that the backup robot system is kind of uh, kind of needs some work, at least in the regional system. All right. So with all those events done, we've got the top ten teams in the West. Um, I don't think it should be a surprise to anyone to see the top team thirteen twenty three. Absolutely nuts this weekend. Uh, almost a perfect ranking score completely undefeated i mean this robot is you know it's poetry in robot form um followed up by their alliance partner 1678 citrus circuit 1619 up a creek robotics who won the colorado regional 2910 jack in the bot who won a pnw district event did they win glacier peak is that right that's right yeah yep. uh 973 the gray bots who were finalists at sacramento 330 the beach bots um, who won at LA, 1410, 1619's partner at Colorado, 2046, Bear Metal, 1726, The Nerds, and 2240, Brute Force, who is probably a surprise to some people who weren't following Colorado. Uh, 2240 is a great hatch panel-only robot uh, that can score on all levels of the rocket, and they have one of the fastest level three climbs I've seen. It's pretty sweet. Um, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a, It's pretty awesome, and I think that's well-deserved top spot there. Yeah. All right. So we've got a lot of events to look forward to and not much time to do it. So we're just going to hit some highlights this week. Uh, Bryce, why don't you tell us what's going on up in the PNW? All right. The Lake Oswego district event doesn't look to be incredibly stacked, but a few teams you might want to keep your eye on our previous winners, 6443 aimbot and 3674, the Cloverbots, as well as my team, 2471, Mean Machine. Uh, Auburn event, or sorry, the Glacier Peak event looks to have several top teams to look out for. Uh, these are including 1318, Issaquah Robotics, 2046, Bare Metal, and 4911, the Cyber Knights. All right. Um, so we've got six regionals in the West. We're just going to hit a couple of them. Uh, I'm going to start with Las Vegas, mainly because Tyler and I are both going to be there. Uh, he's going to be emceeing. I'm going to be game announcing. So if you're in Las Vegas, come by and say hello. Uh, top household names coming in. 987, the locals. First seed winners at San Diego. 842, solid showing at Arizona North, despite an early exit. And 3309, two events under their belt already. Finalists this past weekend at LA. Um, they're going to need to perform at the top of their game consistently to win this event. My sleeper for this event is going to be 7426. They're a hometown rookie called Paradise Robotics. They already have two events under their belt, and they've gotten better at each event. Looking for them to make a deep run with one of the top vets. This and their weekend. lead mentors from nine, used to be on 987 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are a great team. Really looking forward to them this weekend. Uh, Utah, some top teams coming in. 971. Uh, I think everybody saw their performance at San Francisco. They've got a great climb, fast placement using their big suck on panels and cargo. Um, their cargo sometimes gets stuck on the edge of the rocket hole, but some more driver practice should help with that. 2102, Paradox, second overall pick at Del Mar. Has a nice side elevator, but had some struggles figuring out which side to actually score from. They handle cargo well. More practice will make them much more effective. 4944 had a solid first event this past weekend at Colorado. 
They're a fast level one score. They need to improve their hash panel game, and they'll definitely be a threat this weekend. My sleeper for that event is also a Colorado team. They suffered from some current draws issues, some current draw issues this past weekend at Colorado, but 1339 Angel Potics. Um, they've added some Omni wheels instead of some pneumatic wheels, some that new drive configuration and some more practice, maybe even a level two climb. They'll be poised to make a solid run on Saturday. All right. That's all we have time for tonight. Sorry if we did not get to your event. Oh, wait, just kidding. Silicon Valley, top teams coming in. 254, obviously, winners of San Francisco. If they get the hang of driving that complicated the machine, they'll be more dominant than their first event. 649, the MSAT Fish, captain the finalist alliance against 254 at San Francisco. Um, they had a solid showing there. If they continue to improve, they might make another deep run at SVR. 846, the Funky Monkeys were finalists at Canadian Pacific. They need to keep improving if they want to make a deep run at a much more competitive event. My sleeper for this event is 1868. Space Cookies, they've got a great logo robot. If they can partner up with the right, um, right alliance partner, I think they can make a great run as well. All right, we're out of time. Uh, before we sign off, Tyler, who won tonight's giveaway? Yep, this will be the last one for this evening, and the winner of this one is going to be Shelby underscore A. Congratulations. All right. Uh, and Shelby's a subscriber, so lots of rigged emotes and chats. I think we had uh, four out of five, or I'm sorry, five out of six were subscribers today, so we clearly rigged it uh, for them. Please make sure you reach out to me with your contact information, and I will follow up with you either tonight or tomorrow. Awesome. All right, guys, that's all we have time for tonight. Sorry for running a little bit long. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us in the chat. If you want more First Robotics in your life, all we ask is that you let others know about the show. If you got a few bucks to support this stream, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are stoked to have you here. On behalf of myself and Bryce and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. Thank all our moderators in the chat. We'll talk to you next week on Best of the West. Bye. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.